you know, to see, at least to inspire um, what I was uh, going to try to tell you. I think the main idea is that I, it's, it's kind of a, to me, it's a revisionist account. I, I, as I was living through the 90s and, and doing field work in Africa and researching this book, um, I was always struck by the fact that both on the left ideologically and on the right, uh, structural adjustment uh, reforms and the intervention of the World Bank and the IMF in Africa was viewed as, you know, um, a, a kind of uh, revolutionary anti-status quo uh, uh, set of reforms. And um, my revisionist argument is basically that the structural adjustment was designed to preserve the status quo and to preserve the sort of post-colonial, um, you know, uh, elites in power that had been in power uh, since independence and, and typically quite reliant on foreign aid. And I just thought a lot of the debates about structural adjustment were wrong because, um, you know, the economic crisis that had hit Africa was devastating for Africa. But the, the donors funneling uh, money to, to governments was pro-status quo in intent. It was designed to, um, to make whatever changes African leaders needed to make on the economic front more sustainable, more palatable politically. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, to a large extent, it was successful because, uh, you know, we, we still see there's still a, a number of leaders uh, in power today in Africa who were in power in, in, uh, um, in 1979 or at least in the, in the 80s. And as, as recently as a decade ago, a lot of those leaders were still in power, right? A lot of those governments were still in power. So in, in that sense, I, I did want to argue that, that um, to show that this was not a kind of anti-status quo revolutionary, um, you know, uh, really uh, discontinuous uh, uh, program on the part of, of, of the international donors.